Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of the globe and watching this, uh, this lecture series under SWAM. And the title of the lecture is basically Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management and my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur in India. So if you remember in the fifth lecture, we did discuss about the concept that how you can combine two assets or more than two assets and to form a portfolio with the idea that uh, you are main concern is to reduce the risk of the portfolio which is the concept of diversification. And we also mentioned and I did spend some time in, in, in trying to basically give a pictorial idea that uh, the overall efficient set for two assets or three assets as you increase is basically a convex uh, set and trying to basically optimize uh, you can use the general techniques in optimization to find out the best combinations based on the idea that what would be your uh, risk, what would be your return provided you are trying to optimize either on the uh, return or the risk. And in the case of the return, you will basically maximize it and for the uh, risk, you will try to minimize it. So this, this is the investment analysis and portfolio management under SWAM and it is a continuation of introduction to investment an analysis. There would be a lot of topics which you will be covering. Now for this sixth lecture, the main ideas which we will cover would be the Markowitz model and based on the idea that how very simply. Harry Markowitz basically considered optimizing uh, the f in, a, in a very general sense either the first moment or the second moment of the distribution of the returns uh, of the portfolio and when I use the word the, the idea of the first moment or the second moment is basically related to the mean or the variance. And basically you are trying to optimize or um, uh, maximize your expected utility and also minimize your the variance corresponding to the utility. We will also consider optimization of the risk and return separately and obviously so if somebody wants to combine it can take uh, the, the idea can be structured as a multi objective problem which we are not going to consider here in this course. We will also consider that uh, one of the main constraint is basically the weights and if you remember I was talking about the weights time and again because that gives a much better idea how you can solve it is in a very simplistic way. We will consider that one of the constraints which is basically the weights either you consider with the idea that short selling is there and short selling is not there. Then uh, we will extend after going through the simplest simple models, we will consider the two fund theorem and what idea it gives about uh, the two fund theorem and how it can be utilized to draw the efficient frontier. Then we will bring into the idea that the riskless lending and borrowing in considered that means initially you had n number of risky assets, now we bring the nth plus one as a riskless one and how combining the riskless one where now you have n plus 1 assets your total efficient frontier changes and it is a very simple notion that how you can basically now draw the, the efficient frontier. The ideas of efficient frontier minimum variance all these things remain but the overall the, the efficient frontier changes. Based on that once we consider n plus 1 asset we go into the one fund theorem and also try to draw, draw some simile in, in the discussion with, with respect to the two fund theorem. 
and then later on in this class uh, or in this lecture we will try to cover the techniques for calculating the efficient frontier. So, this is the overall idea and if, if there is any spillover we will basically go into the seventh lecture. Now, suppose you have n number of um, financial assets and the, by the word financial assets I am very simply considering the, the stocks. So, assume the portfolio have n number of assets and then when I use the word n I will always be using the small n until and unless mentioned. So, if I use the capital N obviously in that case it means that I am considering small n 1 to small n suffix capital N as the number of stocks which is which can be interchange and uh, interchange in the sense the weights and the number of stocks can be interchanged in the in the very simplistic way and you can solve the problem either using the simplex method or trying to utilize the integer programming and in the case when you have these small n 1 to small n uh, suffix capital N depending on the number of stocks you want to buy or sell. So, assume the portfolio has n number of assets each with an expected return of r bar i. So, this r bar i which I am considering that can also be replaced by small r i by bar which is the returns and with a covariance of sigma i j. So, when I talk about the covariance I, I, I may be repeating many of the things, but please bear with me. Covariance is basically the correlation coefficient rho i j into sigma i into sigma j and where we know that sigma i and sigma j are the corresponding standard deviation for the ith and the j stock rho i j is basically the correlation coefficient existing between the ith and the j stock. Also assume that the weights w i which are given obviously they add up to 1. So, that should be whether you have short selling or not short selling they should definitely add up to 1. Now, then what we are required to find out is basically the minimum variance portfolio such that we fix the mean of the portfolio return at some fixed level of r bar star. So, this r bar star which is given basically it is being fixed by the investor depending on his or her risk profile or return profile. So, if say for example, I want to invest and I want my overall return for the portfolio to be minimum of 20 percent in that case r bar star or small r bar star would be 20 percent or 0 0.2. So, depending on that if somebody wants say for example, the return to be 30 percent minimum then obviously, r capital r bar star or small r bar star would be 0 0.3. So, one can refer to the paper by Markowitz which came out in 1952 in the journal of portfolio um, in journal of finance and the title was portfolio selection. So, you can look have a look at the Wikipedia uh, link and try to basically understand in a very simple way the, the work of Markowitz uh, which has done. Obviously, there are more links you can check that. Now, the idea would be basically we will try to give uh, the flavor of the problem from two fronts. Point one where we want to minimize the risk subject to some constraints. Second case is that when we want to maximize the return subject to some constraints. So, let us uh, consider the first part which is minimization of the risk. So, we want to so the objective function is so the objective function which I am now marking in uh, dark red color is this is the objective function and the objective function we want to minimize the variance. So, you can talk about why this half, half is just a constant. So, if you remember the principal diagonal being the variances of uh, the first stock to the nth stock and the of the diagonal element were basically the covariances and they are being counted twice. So, that is why the value 2. So, in, an, in, in when you are trying to optimize whether you multiply or divide by a constant positive constant what you are considering that would not change the general concept uh, that what you want to get uh, at. Now, there are subject to constraints. So, I will start with the simplest one. The simplest one I will use the color green here. The simple one is basically the weights w 1 till w 
n add up to 1 which is true. Second, the third constraint I will come to the first constraint later on the third constraint being the weights are between w1 uh, between 0 and 1. Now, here I would like to discuss something before I come to the first, first constraint. So, I use a different color. In case if there is short selling then the weights need not be between 0 and 1 they can be negative also that is point 1. But the idea that the weights always add up to 1 would always remain whether short selling is there or not there. Another I, point which I would like to mention is that maybe in many of the practical situations it may be stipulated or it may be possible that the constraint is that I cannot invest more than say for example out of my total amount of money which I have the weights for say for example any one of the assets whatever it is, is cannot cross say for example 60 percent which means in this case whenever I have the weights I am using a different color. So, they would be basically less than 0.6 and it may be possible that for each and every asset I have to invest minimum of. So, this 0.6 is the maximum value and, and, and it also stipulates that I have to basically invest minimum of 20 percent uh, of my weights in uh, any of the assets. So, the overall constraint now would be W i is greater than equal to 0.2 is less than equal to 0.6 and it can be tailor made depending on the situation. It can be say, say for example, for the first only the tech companies I have to invest greater than 30 percent or maybe for the manufacturing companies I cannot invest more than 40 percent. So, the division of the weights would be done accordingly where I will basically specify that for the tech companies i is equal to say for example 1 to 10 consider that first 10 stocks and maybe for the manufacturing sector companies it can be that is from from the 11th 11th one to the 15th one they are uh, as specified such that the weights cannot be uh, more than a stipulated value which uh, is as per the the idea of the problem. Now, coming back to the first constraint. So, the first constraint or uh, if we if forget uh, for the timing forget about the equality sign. On the left hand side you have basically the return of the port portfolio which is basically summation of w i into r bar i and on the right hand side of the of the equation equality sign you have basically the r star bar. So, technically the problem can be the summation of the weights of or, or multiplied by the returns of the of the stock or the financial asset in the portfolio has to be greater than equal to r bar star as I mentioned because you want you follow the concept of non cessation. So, you will always try to basically gain more. So, in this case equality sign is only in the case where you want the return to be exactly r bar star but in general it has to be greater than equal to r star bar based on that you basically have the uh, formulation as given where the let me use the light blue. So, where the set of constraint which you have here which I am marking in this blue box they will delineate the overall area in which your search space where you will basically do the optimization and based on the weights you will basically try to find out the in the the point at which basically the maximization of the objective function happens. In this previous optimization problem we have considered that there is no short selling hence the weights have to be greater than 0. So, they are between 0 and, and 1 which I did mention when I was discussing slide number 6. Now, if we consider that short selling is present. So, I will basically talk about the flavor of the problem and you will understand that I will come to the solutions um, simple solution techniques later on. So, if short selling is present let me mark it to highlight. So, that short selling is present which means it will have um, give us an idea what should be the weights. So, again let us come back to the same problem and go step by step. The first one 
is I am now using a highlighter. This minimization of the risk remains the same. So, I put a tick mark. So, there is no change. The expected value of the portfolio is greater than or equal to R star bar or equal to R star bar that remains same. So, I put a tick mark. The weights as it should be add up to 1, I put a tick mark. And the finally, where there is a change, I will highlight with, with a different color green. So, WIs are unbounded in the sense that they can be negative. And if some are negative, some would be more than 1 such that the addition of the weights equal to 1. Now, we consider the, pre, uh, the flavor of the problem trying to basically minimize the risk. Now, let us change our outlook. That means, what you want to do is a little bit different. This is case 2, where we consider that there is no short selling, again following the same policy. But now, we want to maximize the return. So, if you want to maximize the return, the objective function is, I will use the blue highlighter. So, it is basically maximizing the return portfolio, which we understand. Now, I will, I will, would not come to the first constraint, I will come to the second and the third constraint. Some of the weights is 1, which is right and we understand what it means. And it says that if, if short selling is not allowed, again weights are between 0 and 1. So, if I consider the weights, so they would be in the same uh, quality framework whatever we discussed, it will be greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1 or it can be that there is that bound that weights cannot be less than uh, 20 percent, weights cannot be more than 60 percent. So, if we consider the minimum, the maximum, some value and we denote them as w i min and w i max. So, the cons constraints, uh, one of the third constraint can be like this w i min, this is the minimum value is less than equal to w i is less than equal to w i max. So, this min and max values would be stipulated depending on whatever condition based on which the, uh, the decision maker or the person who is optimizing is trying to solve. Now, come let us come back. We, I told you requested you to wait. So, I let us come back to the first constraint. The first constraint for which I will highlight using the dark red. So, this is the first constraint. So, this constraint if you see the left hand side, it was basically the risk which we had optimized in the case 1 problem. And the objective function in this case which is case 2 was basically the constraint in case 1 which, which was the case when we wanted to optimize, uh, optimize the risk subject to that constraint where the returns was greater than or equal to R star bar. Here, the term which is basically given here on the left hand side of the equality sign is actually it is basically a double summation depending on how you write it. It is w i w j sigma i j and that is equal to sigma square star. Now, this, this variance which we have for the portfolio would technically be less than or equal to sigma square star. I will use the suffix p in order to denote it is a portfolio. So, why less than or equal to? Because we do not want our risk to exceed a certain value, we will always want it to be lower. So, in this case, I have used a equality sign, but in generally, it is less than or equal to sigma square star p. Now, this case 2 problem is being changed. So, what is the change? The only change is that we allow short selling. So, short selling is allowed. So, if I follow the, the idea and I want to basically check the objective functions and the constraint with respect to the first instant of case 2, we, we need to maximize the return which is same. So, I put a tick mark. The sum of the weights is basically equal to 1 which is right. I put a tick mark the variance is equal to sigma square star or less than or equal to sigma square star, I put a tick mark. But the only change which is happening 
is that we have considered short selling is allowed which means in this case we will have WIs are unbounded in the sense that some of the WIs can be negative and technically some of them should be positive such that the weights add up to 1. Now we will consider so out of these four, four problems that means with two different flavors one being minimization of the risk second one being maximization of the return. So, with these four different concepts we will solve the short selling case only give an idea and extend that for solving of the other problems. So, after solving the optimization which is the minimization problem which is minimization of the risk and considering short selling is allowed. So, I will basically highlight what we are doing. We are considering the minimization problem and we are considering short selling is there. So, we basically we consider the simple Lagrangian where the Lagrangians are considered as mu and lambda and based on the Lagrangian we basically differentiate the Lagrangian function with respect to the variables equate to, the, to 0 and check how many such simple equations are there based on which we need to find out the, the unknowns. So, the unknowns are the weights and technically the unknowns would also be pertaining to the Lagrangian multipliers which is lambda and mu. So, the overall Lagrangian uh, differentiation which we have for the first uh, based on W i's. Now, when we solve the problem and when we differentiate it. So, technically what we have. So, the I will only concentrate for the first time this part. So, actually the problem or the so called objective function was what? Was basically double summation of w i w j rho i j. So, when I differentiate that with respect to w, so it is basically w square and there was a half if you remember we are trying to basically do it with minimizing and a half of there. So, when we basically try to differentiate that these are basically w squares. So, the 2 comes outside and w square basically becomes w 1. So, that leads to the fact that the corresponding other functions which we had. So, other functions was basically other functions means when we consider the constraints. So, this was basically the objective function. The constraints were summation of w i r bar i and the other case was basically summation of w i is equal to 1 and obviously the weights considering short selling is allowed would be unbounded. So, when once we when we bring uh, this uh, this idea and try to basically have um, the Lagrangian multipliers and differentiate that thus the first set of equation first I am talking about the set because there would be n number of equations corresponding to the fact that the w i is, is basically from w 1 to w n and we will partially differentiate that Lagrangian with respect to once with w 1 then to w 2 till w n and obviously with respect to the Lagrangian multipliers also. So, when we basically differentiate that with respect to the Lagrangian multiplier the second equation which is written here which I will basically put a tick mark third one which you put a tick mark they become redundant. The reason being if I see obviously we are go, we get back to the original set of constraint which is uh, summation of w i into r bar i is equal to r bar star and the third one is basically summation of w i is equal to 1. So, these two are redundant. So, let us put a cross because they would be of no use in trying to solve the problem. But let us go back to the first part which I mentioned has n different equations corresponding to w 1 to w n. 
So, if I consider that equation, it is linear in nature. So, there are n number of equations corresponding to w1 to wn, number of variables is n. So, we can solve it using simple solution of linear equations, that is all. n number of equations, n number of variables, solve them and get the answer. So, you will be thinking, do we have all, all the values? Yes, the r bar star is known to us, the sigma wy is known to us because we have calculated from the data. Now, lambda and mu may not be known, we put those values and solve it to find out the wis which are the opt which we want to be optimal in order to give us the best result for the optimization problem. So, suppose there are three uncorrelated assets with variances of 1 and mean value of 1, 2, 3. So, solving this equation if we, if we solve it. So, the weights come out to be, so when I am talking about solving it, you basically have the equation of w i then sigma i j minus, let me go back to the equation, uh, w i sigma i j fine, then minus da, lambda r star minus lambda r bar star and the third part is minus mu is equal to 0. So, solving it and obviously putting some lambda and mu. So, what we will do later on, we will put lambda as 1, mu as 0 and mu as 1, lambda as 0. So, when, once we solve it, these values which come out, okay, by the way, for the solution, obviously, I told that we need r bar star, but he, here we keep it as it is because the equation form which we get would be in terms of r bar star and the moment we put uh, r bar star, we can solve the problem. So, once the, the values which are w1, because there are three assets, w2, w3, they are solved, these values come out to be like this, I am circling them. On let me also highlight so in the green color. So, this is no, I am not scratching it, I am just highlighting it. So, the first w i is has the weight which is dependent on r star, second weight w 2 is constant is one third, and w 3 is also dependent of r star. So, once we put the value of r star, we can solve the pro problem, find out the weights w1, w2, w3. Once the weights are found out, we can plug them and find out the expected value of the portfolio. We can plug them and can find out the variance of the portfolio also. So, once we put them and solve it with the weights as given, the r bar p for that portfolio with n3 assets comes out to be r bar star. And the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, considering the uh, different weights we found out, for the portfolio comes out to be this value, which I am basically now putting double tick here. So, once we solve them, put that r bar, r bar star value, get sigma p for the portfolio, get r bar for the portfolio and delineate and find out the optimum, optimal portfolio which can result from the calculations which we did. Now, once we have solved it and once we know the so called uh, the best uh, so frontier based on the idea that non satiation concept and trying to reduce your risk concept, they are actually true. So, our overall efficient frontier, I will use the blue color here and that there is a reason for that. So, our overall set which we found depending on the, the va values of w i, we basically delineate the whole curve and from point A, which is also given as m v p to point B, it is being formulated by the weights w1 to wn such that short selling is not allowed. But if you check, say for example, 
as short selling continues that means some of the weights are negative some of the weights are greater than uh, 1 we will be delineating this curve which is now being shown in hashed red lines which means that after that point there would be interchange of the weights between the stocks such that you want to basically minimize your variance maximize your return so this minimization and maximization is such that you always do not maximize keeping the variance constant or vice versa that means you do not keep decreasing your variance keeping the weights constant so there is a compromise depending on on the deduction of the variance and increase of the uh, the weights so the reason why i highlighted so let me put it short selling allowed and short selling not allowed and here as usual we measure the standard deviation which is risk along the x axis and the return r bar along the y axis now suppose we have two portfolios okay now let me pause here and 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 uh, give a background so you say you will be thinking that how did i draw this curve so consider i keep changing r star bar and each instance i solve the problem and find out the weights so once the weights are found out i can plug in plug in back into back into the equation find out r uh, the expected value of the, of the portfolio for each instant of the problem similarly i can find out the standard deviation or the variance of each in instant of the problem which is the for the portfolio and if i mark them the graph which i got was basically the blue one and the red one is basically when short selling is allowed that will give us an idea how the efficient frontier would look like corresponding to the fact you have n number of assets with certain returns certain um, uh, variances and a and a set of correlation coefficient existing between the particular uh, stocks now how does it give us an idea about the two fund theorem which i'll come back within few minutes so say for example i do not know the overall efficient frontier i only mark those two points i'll come to the diagram within minutes please bear bear with me i mark these two points as say for example a and b which means that a and b are on the efficient frontier such that the weights are different because the return profile uh, being designed by the investor is different now let us visualize what happens that if i am giving this given those points a and b and i also know the correlation coefficient existing between the two so called portfolios if that is the case theoretically it is possible to delineate the combination of these two funds or the, the, these portfolios in a such a way that i basically um, uh, pass on all the different type of combinations which are possible depending on the r star value r star va p value which the investor wants for himself which means these two funds these two portfolios will give us in in the best possible manner the overall uh, efficient frontier such that any combinations which i which which the investor has and if they are efficient would basically be one point on the efficient frontier which has been uh, drawn in, in in slide number 15 suppose we have two portfolios after sol solving the optimization problem which i just mentioned corresponding to two different values of r r which is r star 1 and r star 2 so these are average values now combining them in some proportions such that the respective weights always add up to one so we have two portfolios we invest uh, a certain amount in in portfolio one and certain amount in portfolio two depending on the weights such that the weights add up to one we can have an infinite number of combinations each of which is a solution to the optimization problem which is true because if i optimize using different values of r star bar obviously i'll be able to delineate the whole curve so this gives an idea gives gives us an idea about the two fund theorem so what is the two fund theorem two efficient funds or portfolios can be established so that any efficient portfolio can be duplicated in terms of mean and variance as a combination of these two funds because along the efficient frontier 
wherever I am. It can be achieved by combining them in some proportions, point 0.1. And the moment they are on the efficient frontier, I am aware of the returns and risk. So, let me continue reading it. Two efficient funds portfolios can be established so that any efficient portfolio can be duplicated in terms of mean and variance as a combination of these. In other words, all investors seeking efficient portfolios need only invest in this combined portfolio, which is a very interesting concept. Say for example, everybody is not able to buy all these n number assets in any proportions. So, consider there are two portfolios which are being sold in the market. Consider the mutual fund. Mutual fund are basically a conglomeration of assets where we know that in what proportions in general that different type of stocks have been combined. So, as we are not able to go to the stock market and, and basically check each and every financial asset which is there and buy and sell there, I buy them as baskets. So, these baskets are the mutual fund or the two funds such that trying to combine and trying to put my money in some combinations, I am able to delineate the whole curve in the efficient frontier. So, these two mimic in different ways depending on the which the overall efficient frontier. So, this is how it looks. I have A which is mutual fund 1, I have B which is mutual fund 2 and combining them I am basically able to delineate the whole curve. This another part which is important which I did not mark here is the set of points which are between an A and B, which I am now marking in green, it means that I am not short selling between A and B. But if I am able to mark the other two as dashed, so this is means A and B are being combined with one short selling and other not short selling. What are those? I will come back to that within minutes. Other is if you go here. And obviously, there is a point which is the minimum variance point and the point B after which obviously, it will be a short selling of one to the other and it will make sense when we come to the risk free interest rate being combined. So, the optimization problem under the consideration that there is no short selling. So, till now we have considered short selling, now there is no short selling and we are trying to basically minimize the risk subject to the all the same conditions. What are the conditions? Number one is weights at up to 1, I am talking from the simplest one and com coming back to the, the one which needs explanation. Weights as short selling is not allowed, weights are between 0 and 1 and the third one, first one is basically the return one which says that the expected value of the portfolio is greater than equal to R star bar. Here we show it equality, so at short selling is not allowed. So, this would basically be a non-linear optimization problem and cannot be solved as shown before as we have done when, when the short selling was being allowed, but I will come to this sets of problems slowly later on. So, let us consider a simple example. We have the following data variance, covariance and returns which are given and the variance, covariance values are given as such. So, this is security. One. So, on the first column, we have the security which are marked as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, they can be State Bank, they can be Tata Steel, they can be Tata Motors, they can be HCL, whatever ONGC. And this matrix which we have, which I am now marking is basically the variance, covariance matrix which is there between all these 5 stocks. So, why I mentioned that? I know it, it may be a little bit redundant, but please bear with me these values which are being marked in red are the variances and if we check the of the diagonal element. So, say for example, 0.74 and here it is 0.74 or say for example, minus 0.27 or oh, this would be minus 0.27 this one. So, if, if I come if I check these, these are the uh, covariances existing between in the first case which is which I am where I am highlighting now, it will be the first to the fourth and fourth to the first. So, they are same. In the second case which is minus 0.27, it will basically be the third to the fifth or fifth to the third. And finally, in the last column, we have basically the returns of each and every asset. 
so these are corresponding to r bar i and the corresponding values are basically here it is basically sigma i j so sigma i j is for the case when we when we expand it rho i j and the weights are not there for the time being uh, obviously the rates are not we have to find it out uh, rho i j into sigma i into sigma j so we'll, we we can solve it but i'm i want to highlight the main problem is that how you can solve it using the lagrangian one if you remember which i had discussed about few slides back for considering solving the uh, the problem where you are considering the lagrangian we consider lambda 0 mu 1 um, uh, that will give us the minimum variance point so minimum variance point is basically the point where the variance of the whole portfolio is the minimum and another point is basically lambda 1 mu 0 so these once they give the solution what extra information do they give i'll come to that but let me explain so if i am able to find these two points which means what immediately i am aware that two portfolios have been found so if these two portfolios have been found i can use, use easily utilize the concept of two fund theorem and with an idea that i know the correlation coefficient existing between these two two portfolios i can delineate the whole efficient frontier very easily so when i go back to the initial uh, problem so when i go back to this initial problem let me mark it so you had summation w i one when i have differentiated that lagrangian has been differentiated sigma i j minus lambda into r bar star minus mu is equal to 0. So, there are n number of equations. So, let me double check it. Wait. Summation w i sigma i j minus lambda r bar star. Yes. Summation w i sigma i j minus lambda r bar star minus mu. So, let us come back to the slide. So, there are n number of equations, n number of constraints. So, what you do is that you replace the values so how i do i replace the values so i will utilize this equation and go back to the last slide which is the 22nd one so let me erase it because rather than getting it so cluttered with the colors so the equation was i'll write it here so because that would be easy so summation w i sigma i j minus lambda r bar star minus mu is equal to 0. So, I need to solve it and remember lambda 1 mu 0 or mu 0 lambda 1. So, consider lambda 0 mu 1 first case. So, lambda 0 mu 1 means the second term is not there. So, what we will have the equations would be w 1 into sigma 1 1 which is 2.3 the second value would be and I am I am I am going through the first row I fixed I keep changing n plus 0 0.93 w2 so i'm going again i'm repeating row wise plus 0 0.62 w3 plus 0 0.74 w4 minus 0 0.23 w5 and what is there on the other side this lambda r star is not there so this mu which is 1 is taken on the right hand side 
second equation i'll i'll come back to the them later on w1 plus 1.4 w2 plus 0.22 w3 plus 0.56 w4 plus this would be minus so let us not forget it plus 0.26 w5 is equal to 1 again so this is first equation so I'll use a coloring for the third equation so I'll keep changing the color so I should have done it for the second equation but so it's better late than never 0 0.62 w1 plus 0 0.22 w2 plus 1.80 w3 plus 0 0.78 W4 minus 0 0.27 W5 is equal to 1. Third equation. Fourth one. 0 0.74 W1 plus 0 0.56 W2 plus 0 0.78 W3 plus 3.40 w4 minus 0 0.56 w5 is equal to 1 fourth equation done so i'll use and now red has been utilized so let us come to blue minus 0 0.23 w1 plus 0 0.26 w2 minus 0 0.27 w3 minus 0 0.56 w4 plus 2.60 w5 is equal to 1. So how many equations are there? So I'll use the black predator first equation, second equation, third equation, fourth equation, fifth equation. How many constraint? How many unknowns? Five. Five equations, five unknowns. Solve them and then get that value of w1, w2, w3, w4 and w5. They are w1 star, w2 star, w3 star, w4 star, and w5 star based on the fact that I have taken lambda 0 mu 1. So, lambda 0 mu 1 was, was basically the minimum variance point. So, you solve them, you will get the minimum variance point weights. Now, let us come back to the other point because we, we did highlight the concept of, of one fun theorem. So, I am going to erase it here and concentrate for the other part. So, we have solved at least understood to and we are able to get the minimum variance point. So, obviously, the other point is required for which we again need 5 equations for the 5 variables. So, please give me about 30 40 seconds and I'll be I'll try to make the screen clean such that solving it for the other point is easily explained and there's no confusion for anybody so the job is done so let me come back to the other equation so what we are doing we use black one so it is now lambda 1 mu 0 so we will, we will be using lambda 1 mu 0 so double let us double check it lambda 1 mu 0 will be the other point so the first equation i will use the dark red so this is 2.30 w1 plus 0 0.93 w2 so, I am using again the first row plus 0 0.62 W3 plus 0 0.74 of W4 minus 0 0.23 of W5. Now, let us pause. Here, lambda is 1, mu is 0. So, if when I take it to the right hand side, it is only R star bar. So, what are the R star bar? They would be coming out now equal to 
fifteen point one zero, which is this one. So now let us come back to the second equation. Let us use use red. It is again two point three zero. Uh, no, sorry, sorry, it's my mistake. Not two point three zero. It is zero point nine three W one plus one point four zero W two plus zero point two two W three plus zero point five six W four plus zero point two six W five is equal to twelve point five zero, which is the second one. The third one, green, zero point six two W one plus zero point two two W two plus one point eight zero W three plus zero point seven eight W four minus zero point two seven W five is equal to fourteen point seven zero. I am not marking with an arrow because it will get cluttered. Blue one color zero point seven four W one plus zero point five six W two plus zero point seven eight W three plus three point sorry three point four zero w four minus zero point five six w five is equal to nine point zero two fourth equation done and the last one let us use the violet color minus zero point two three w one plus zero point two six w two minus zero point two seven w three Minus zero point five six W four plus two point six zero W five is equal to seventeen point six eight. Oh, another uh, thing. Yeah, another thing. Let me. Uh, I've utilized this equation. I completely forgot. I it's. I sincerely apologize for that. Uh, give me two minutes. I'll come to that. You solve it. You'll get the equation. What I did uh, miss. Was these are the variance covariance matrix. Now, if you consider in the formula, you are using the standard deviation. So obviously, you have to find out the square root for the the ideas based on which you you can have uh, this the principal diagonal. So it's it's my mistake. I'm extremely sorry. So this have to be square. You have to find out the square root. And once I find out the square root, these are the variance-covariance matrix. So variance-covariance matrix, we know that is equal to uh, given by the formula by multiplying the correlation coefficient and the value of uh, standard deviation of one with the mass standard deviation of two, and based on that you can find out the values as as given. So it it was absolutely I I in the flow I completely missed it. So once you find out the uh, the standard deviation. You plug in as I did for the first set of equation when uh, lambda is equal to zero, mu is equal to one, which is the minimum variance point. When lambda is equal to one, mu is equal to zero is the other point. I can solve it. I can find out these uh, two sets of values of W one star, W two star, W three star, W four star, W five star for the minimum variance point. Similarly, the star values of Ws for the other point. And then I can plug them and find out the minimum variance point. Coordinates with respect to the mean and the standard deviation. Similarly, for the other point. So once I solve them, so lambda zero mu one. I did spend a little bit extra time there, but uh, it's fine. So once lambda zero mu one is solved, we get the equation. So if you remember, this was equal to one, which I've been highlighting. So once we solve them, the weights come out to be this. But we should pause. There is a caveat here, uh, a, a sort of warning or to be careful. Now, this weights which I found out, double check, they don't add up to one, so they have not been normalized. So, normalize them, 
using very simple concept the normalization concept with this. That means, V i divided by the summation of V i's from i is equal to 1 to n. Once you find them double check again they some should definitely be 1. So, the sum which you find out which is 1 which is for the point which is lambda 0 mu 1 which is the minimum variance point. So, these are the weights. So, these are the weights which means I invest 8.8 percent, 25.1, 28.2, 10.4 and 27.5 at the minimum variance point to obtain a return of 14.1413 and a standard deviation of 0.791. So, that is the crux of the first set of the solution. Similarly, when I solve it for the other problem or other case lambda 1 mu 0. So, again you see I am putting a highlighter here double check it comes out to be on the right hand side that r bar star is already given or not r bar for each and every stock which was the last column in the table. So, once you solve it using the same set of the equation which I mentioned uh, the the weights come out to be this double check they do not add up to 1 once you normalize them using the same concept the normalized weights should add up to 1 as they as they do. So, we invest 15.8, 15.5, 31.4, 3.8 .3 and 33.4 the corresponding weights for W 1 to W 5 and the corresponding returns this r square it does not mean the square it is basically for the second point. The returns is 15.2 and the variance is 0.812. So, once these these two points are found out. So, this is the risk return framework minimum variance point is found the other point is found if you have the correlation coefficient you can draw the delineate the efficient frontier. So, that would give a good idea that how the two fund theorem can be used practically and, and I did mention from the idea from the mutual fund. With this I will end this lecture have a nice day and thank you very much. I apologize completely for uh, missing that point where the standard division had to be found out have a nice day bye.